Good morning and welcome to Rich Thoughts for Breakfast. I'm Harold Herring and that's my fine wife, Beth. During the first week of October in 2017, we were in a meeting in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where one of the speakers offhandedly mentioned a book called Two Chairs. It stirred my interest and I immediately ordered the book. As I began reading, I understood why the Holy Spirit stirred me is it opened my eyes to a whole new dimension in prayer. Bob Bodine, the author of the book and a a member of the Texas Rangers Board of Directors and Entertainment Sports Management Company, Bob Bodine learned the supernatural truth about two chairs from his mother. Now, please understand, the book is not about the furniture, but who's sitting in the furniture waiting for you each morning. Once we understand the significance of God waiting to talk with us each morning, excuse me, it will become a game changer in your travels through life. I mean, you know your Heavenly Father wants to talk with you, but now you're about to set the appointment to meet every day before your day begins. We often read and quote Psalm 5, verse 3, Psalm 5, 3 in the classic Amplified Bible, But it's about to become all the more real in your spirit. For it says, in the morning you hear my voice, O Lord. In the morning I prepare a prayer, a sacrifice for you, and watch and wait for you to speak to my heart. Psalm 5, verse 3 in the New International Version says it this way. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning I lay my request before you and wait in expectation. As suggested... I put the two chairs in my office, home office, facing each other. The first eight months, I kept a diary of what I asked the Lord for and his responses back to me. Yes, God does respond. Most of the time, he speaks too well to me, to my mind. There have been a couple of times where I literally heard his voice. Sometimes, a day or two later, he's given me the answer I was seeking. And on several occasions... I even smelled the sweet fragrance of the Holy Spirit as I sat facing his chair. You experience, your experience in the chairs may be totally different than mine or Beth's. But whatever it is, don't give up. Sometimes it takes a while to make a connection. There is a difference between the way you and I talk. In John 4.24, John 4.24, it explains, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The main thing is that he does, well, God wants to talk to you. When you sit in the chair, be expectant about what God wants to say to you. After all, he's been waiting for such a conversation with you for a long time. That's true. If you're reading this book, if you read this book, you're relating to what I'm saying. But let me say, if you don't have the book, now, here's what I put down before this morning. It says, I was going to say to you, the hardback book is $20, but we'll send it to you for a gift of $10. Because, praise God, we had some believers who are helping to make this book more affordable to other believers. Just go to heraldherring.com, and when you sow your seed, put two chairs in the information on Now, that, honey, was what we did yesterday. But this morning when I was sitting in the chair, the Lord clearly directed me, us, to send this book to anybody who requested. Okay. With the the, the condition that you promised to read it. That's the condition. See, he does talk to you in the chairs. Now, on page four of the book, Bob listed six questions that he had when he first heard about two chairs. We found that we had many of the same questions he did. Here are his questions and our answers. First, why two chairs? Who sits in the other one? Well, one chair is for you and the other chair is reserved for God. I vividly remember one morning early in my two chairs experience when it occurred to me that I needed a bigger chair for God. Almost immediately, the Lord told me that he is God. And he can be or sit wherever he wants. He said, to get your 
Get your mind off everything but me. There may be more on that later on or another day. God also reminded me that he's bigger than my thoughts, bigger than any problems I have, bigger than any trouble I have. In Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9, Isaiah 55, verses 8 and 9 in the New Living Translation, it says, My thoughts are not like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Second, what's the point of the meeting? You know, talking with your best friend, one whose instructions are always right, a friend who loves you so much, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for you. What if God wanted to call and tell you things that you didn't even know you needed to know? In Jeremiah 33, 3, Jeremiah 33, verse 3, this in the classic Amplify Bible, it says, Call to me. And I will answer you and show you great and mighty things, fenced in and hidden, which you do not know, do not distinguish and recognize, have knowledge of and understand. The purpose of the meeting is to learn what you don't know, because he knows it. Hallelujah. Third, what will be discussed? The list is as unlimited as your imagination. You should seek his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding about whatever you're facing. It could be his direction on a new job, solving a problem at work or home, finding a mate, your dreams, goals, obstacles, or how to overcome a particular adversity. Maybe you look at your problems, maybe look at the problems you face in life as something you you can handle yourself or hire someone else to do. But wouldn't it be, you could see you could do that, but wouldn't it be better to seek answers and instructions from a source that's never wrong and never has ulterior motives? Think about that. What should you discuss? Well, what's on your mind and your heart? In other words, what are the things that you need to know? Proverbs 32a, 32a, I'm sorry, Psalm 32a, Psalm 32a, thank you. Classic Amplified Bible. I, the Lord, will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Can anybody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Love that scripture. Fourth, how often do you need to meet? Well, how often do you have a question or that you need answered or problems that you need solved or further directions on fulfilling your destiny every day? How often do you drink water and eat every day? Romans 5, 2, Romans 5, verse 2 in the classic Amplified Bible says, Through him also we have our access, entrance, introduction, by faith into this grace, state of God's favor, in which we firmly and safely stand. And let us rejoice and exult in our hope of experiencing and enjoying the glory of God. Harold and I have found that seeking him at the two chairs the first thing in the morning works best for us. In Psalm 62, 5, Psalm 62, verse 5, in the King James Version, it says, My soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Fifth, I have enough meetings already. How can I fit in any more? Mark Luther, the renowned theologian, once said, I have so much to do that I shall spend the first three hours in prayer. (laughs) So don't get nervous. That's not Bob or our recommendation. In fact, it's just the opposite. Most of the time when we pray for a long period of time, we're doing all the praying, the talking. We just spend the time talking to God, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. But in two chairs, just tell God what you need answers for help, assistance, direction. Let me put it this way. When you tell God what you need, shut up. Stop talking. That's right. Just be still and listen. Six, how long will it take? That's a good question. 
We have some friends that pray an hour or two every day. Sometimes I can fall into that category. Yes. I, I get in there and I like to intercede. You do. But my that's husband, a different kind of prayer. That's true. <clears throat> Excuse me. My husband's a lot more like Charles Spurgeon, who once said, I never pray for five minutes, but I never go more than five minutes without praying. The point is, this is not the kind of prayer encounter we're talking about. Bob's recommendation in the Two Chairs book is just as his mom taught him, that for every minute you pray, spend four minutes listening for your answer. As we said earlier, something, sometimes his, God's answer is immediate, and sometimes it'll just work itself out over several days, which really leads us to the sixth question posed on page four of the book. You probably just came up with another answer, <clears throat> excuse me, another question, what do you do while you're waiting on your answers? Well, that's a question that Bob didn't exactly discuss, but we're going to get into it, aren't we, honey? Yes, we're going to do on it tomorrow. tomorrow's call. Yep. Now, there's no time limit. The amount of time it takes is between you and God. It's amazing the number of books and sermons written on prayer. The two chairs, meeting, gathering, whatever you want to call it, is not an accessory prayer. Without question, intercession is important for the body of Christ and for the heathen. And you do a lot of that, babe. Two chairs is simply you meeting each day for a short period of time with the one person Hallelujah. who can give you the answers to what you're seeking. And the great news is that he's never wrong. What's important is that you're open to what God says to you. One last thing. I want to pose this question to you as one that Bob's mom posed to him. Think about that. Think about it. What's, why is it important that you're open to what God says to you? Well, for us and we believe all of you, that's an easy answer. It really is. This is basically what we've taught today as we took what was some of the things in the introduction of the book and that at our perspective, we gave the answers to the six questions he had. And we've actually got another question that we'll deal with on the call tomorrow. We're going to be talking about this book for a few days. But we consider it that important because it's, I think, honey, it will revolutionize a person's life. Well, <clears throat> if you want to start out 2019 with a closer walk with the Lord, this is an incredible answer for you. There's an old gospel song, Just a Little Talk with Jesus. Just a little talk in two chairs with God. Hallelujah. Again, if you don't have the book, send me an email to Harold at HaroldHerring.com. And I'll, in God's direction, we'll sow that book as a seed into your life. And uh, we'll do that. We will. If you've been blessed by the teaching, go to HaroldHerring.com. At the top where it says, Sow a Seed. Just ask God what seed he'd have you sow. That's all we ever ask. Make sure you check out this week's two-minute video. And if you've been blessed by this teaching, let us know that, too. Amen. Till tomorrow morning at 830 Eastern, God bless you. Happy trails. And keep thinking rich thoughts. We love you. We appreciate you. God bless you. Bye-bye.